Welcome back to part two. As you can see, I got it up on some jack stands. I got the wheels off it, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and remove the aircraft. Oh, uh, this is paint remover. I'm gonna go ahead and spray this puppy down and start getting that paint pale. And there's gonna be no intro today. I'm just going straight into this. Let's roll. By the way, it's 111 today. It's uh, 8.30 this in the morning. It's still 111. And uh, yeah, you have to cover up when you spray this stuff or you will hate your life. Oh, I can hear it. You hear that noise? Time to get this stuff out. Get it going. I can get the camera off. There we go. So it's been a day since I sprayed the aircraft remover and it, it may remove aircrafts, but it didn't do anything to any of this paint. It didn't even budget. It didn't make it bubble. It didn't make it do anything. It's terrible. So, all right, I'm gonna get the grinder out with the wire wheel and go ahead and do it the old fashioned way. Before I start grinding, I just want to let you know I got the uh, tires off and starting to get everything cleaned up. Uh, I ordered a new master cylinder. As you can see, the top's completely gone on that, and been sitting so long I wouldn't want to trust it with uh, something as important as, as important as your brakes. So I ordered new of that. Um, I tried to get the tires popped back on. They're so dry rotted they just busted basically. So I don't even want to put tubes in them because they'll pop out the holes. But uh, popped on the tires so I ordered new tires they'll be here soon I'm gonna get all four new tires on there uh, I did get two new seats with five-point harnesses new five-point harnesses that are gonna go in here um, yeah this thing's gonna be amazing I got a lot of stuff coming so I really need to get this old paint off so I can get it in primer and then go ahead and paint it so I got to get to grinding <laughs> Okay, so I was able to get quite a bit sanded down yesterday. I have to wait till wait for a little bit here before I can start grinding again. My wife and children are all working at home, so running a grinder may be an issue. <laughs> but as you can see, I started bringing it down back down to metal. The inside, I'm going to hit any of the spots that are kind of rusty, like this here. Uh, get everything cleaned up as best I can. I don't know that I'll get all of the paint off the inside, but we're going to have brand new seats and such there. Um, I'll make sure I get it good and cleaned up. Uh, let's see, I got this sanded down in the front. So I got a little bit more work to do on the cage to get that thing prepped. But uh, that's my job today is to get this thing in primer. And... Uh, then we can figure out what colors we want to do this. I thought about maybe having you guys give me some ideas on colors and I could put them on a wheel. We could spin the wheel and whatever it lands on, that's what color we paint it. But the other thing I got to do today is pull this rear end housing, this, this whole piece off. Uh, it simply comes off with, undo that, take off the shock, and then take off the support at the bottom there and I can remove the whole rear end, which is where that new motor is going to sit. So, alrighty, well, let's get into it. Yes, finally. Uh, some of you know I've ordered a lot of parts for this uh, hammerhead twister, and today I finally got something big in. Let's check it out.
Oh yeah. Let's take a look. Oh yeah. Brand new motor. Okay, so the main thing I gotta look at is where the shaft is and I have to measure over to see what that distance is to make sure that it's the same as the old motor that we had there. So let me grab a tape measure. Okay, let's go ahead and measure from the axle up to that mounting point right yep, there. So I'm looking at from there to there just under 13 inches. So well, let me flip this because it's upside down. So if you buy one of these yourself, um, it comes extremely oiled. You can see the uh, oil pooled up in the bag, which is a good thing, but it kind of gets all over. So let me do the shaft. There's from the shaft to there. Boom. We got the right one because there's two of these. One of them is uh, a, a longer uh, housing on the back here, and those are for the scooters. And the shorter one, like I have here, is for the uh, carts, like the twister that we're working on. Whew, that thing's a little heavy. And that grease, or what oil, is extremely stinky. Woo! Ugh, horrible. But this thing is a beautiful beast. Completely brand new. Brand new starter. Well, here's our clamp for our carburetor. It's going to go here. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful machine. Brand new. And that means I really need to start kicking butt on this frame. One other thing, my uh, my rear wire har harness came in, and uh, so I got to lay this out and double check it against my original harness, which I have me laying neatly over there. And then this box that just came in is tubes for another project I'm simultaneously working on, which is this little uh, 110 four wheeler. Yesterday I was able to uh, get the thing cleaned up a little bit, get the wiring set up. Uh, you can see I got the spark plug out. I'm checking it for spark. Uh, I had to fix the gas tank, which, yes, it's very ugly, but there was a crack all the way here. So I heated up plastic and melted it, shoved it down in where the crack was, and then covered it in plastic epoxy from JB Weld. So I'm hoping that'll at least stop the stink from coming in so I can at least test drive this thing and uh, make it run. My whole point is to make this one run, fix the seat, maybe put a headlight on it, uh, get it where it'll drive, and let somebody else do all the primper, proper, you know, plastics and make it all nice and whatever. But I think it'll be the perfect rig for uh, people with younger children that want to go up north in Arizona to Flagstaff and such and go bop around in the hills. This will be perfect once I get it up and, uh, and sound and running well. What's it like to work in 111? It's really, really hot. Whew. This thing's whipping my butt, but I've got the uh, rear end loose. It's, uh, it's so hot I can't touch it even with gloves, so I gotta wait till the sun goes down a little bit and I'll pull it inside so we can get this engine uh, mocked up and then we can clean up the uh, rear end, get it painted, start putting her together. Okay, well here's where I'm gonna stop the video for this part, uh, part two. As you can see, I got the rear end loose. I got the uh, bolt out of the back here. It goes in here, normally sits here. Uh, I took one of the shocks off here, and then there's some Allen wrenches that you use to pop that uh, rear end link off, and then you can drop this down. I got it all dropped down, but if you look over here, excuse my finger, I have to remove uh, the line that runs to the brake caliper, uh, there's actually one that is for brake fluid and one that is for controlling the brake. I remove those two and then I'll be able to pull this inside. But it is, uh, as you know, ridiculously hot. So I'm going to wait till it gets dark and I'll start that in episode three or part three. Thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. If you get a chance, hit that subscribe. It really helps me out. Let me know how I'm doing with this. Uh, I know I'm kind of all over the place right now, but I want to get this out and cleaned up so that I can get the new motor mounted and in because it has the mounts right there for the motor. And then that'll also give me room to get to the back side of this stuff and 
get it all all the paint ground off of it so stay tuned for more work on this fun little buggy